Welcome to West Shore Unlimited, where we tell local stories about our local community. It's made by volunteers like Jerry and I, and you. Summer is in full swing, and we're here celebrating by being outdoors here at the Highlands at Caleb Pike Park. And just up the road from here, we're going to learn about a family who's trying to teach the rest of us to live sustainably, in style. Sense in the Highlands here in Victoria. Well, Gordon and I met about eight years ago, and within three months we were engaged, and three months after that we got married, and that's when I became stepmom to Gord's two little kids who were five and seven at the time. And six months after that we went shopping for a piece of land that we were going to build our home on, and uh, just to make it really interesting, what happened then? Mm -hmm. You brought your parents along. <laughs> yeah, they sold the family home at 34 years in the Lower Mainland, and we moved on to this piece of land. We actually went shopping for a municipality to call home. We knew exactly what we wanted to do. And we moved onto this piece of land in two trailers. And uh, living in a trailer is a really good example of how we're fighting nature. Nature is our enemy when you live in a trailer. So every time it was, it, it was, too, it was sunny, it was too hot in the trailers. If it was rainy, it was too wet in the trailers. It didn't matter what nature did out there. It wasn't your friend, you fought it. And the house, we wanted it to be completely opposite. We wanted it didn't matter what nature threw at us, we wanted it to function with nature. So if it was raining, we'd be happy, windy, we'd be happy, sunny, we'd be happy, and that's what we've done. And we've done that within our goals to do that within the building code, the BC building code. When we moved up here, this was just a pile of rock up here. We, we found a site that was previously impacted and we created an ecosystem where one didn't exist. So our home is actually part of the gardens. You can't separate it. So we share energy and water and resources with the vegetable gardens. So we're not separate. And really it's quite interesting because the gardens are actually made up of very similar materials as the house. They're just organized a bit differently. So with our gardens, we're able to irrigate the gardens with rainwater that we harvest from a living roof. So the living roof acts like a mini watershed to filter the water out and clean it up. And then we can use it to irrigate the gardens. We also use our gray water in the house, which is water that we've used once, you know, like from the kitchen sink or bath water, laundry, and we use that to water our berry bushes, things like apple trees or berry bushes, plum trees, that sort of thing. Cob is a, it's a very ancient building practice. Uh, it's used throughout the world and it's made of clay, sand and straw. Where uh, clay is the glue, sand, sand is the strength. And the straw is like nature's rebar, it provides a tensile strength. And you mix it up and while it's wet you can hand build it. So unlike adobe which you dry your bricks, this is just it's wet and you go up and you hand form it. There's a lot of benefits to using earth and architecture for the construction of your home. And we've done a year-long research study on the house with monitors within the walls and everything to actually study how the walls perform. And it's amazing how well the thermal performance is of the cob. So it's kind of like where high-tech meets low-tech. So the cob is sort of the low-tech idea, but we also have solar PV system that's grid intertie with BC Hydro. We have solar thermal hot water system with evacuated tubes that make our space heating, so the hydronic tubes in the floor, plus it gives us our domestic hot water. We have living roofs, we have grey water systems, we have rainwater harvesting systems. Don't forget the composting toilet. We've got composting toilets which we then take the, all the resources that come out of the house, it's not a waste, and we compost it properly, we do scientific studies on it and then we actually are able to use it in the garden. And so we can grow a huge majority of the family's food right here on this, in these gardens. We've actually built soil. This is our salad box. We've been eating out of this since February. Tons of kale and lettuce and whenever I thin it out I take handfuls to the chicken so I'm always popular when I visit them. The chicken coop also has a living roof on it and so that filters their own rainwater harvesting sy system. The chicken coop is actually a, an off-the-grid chicken coop so it's got its own solar PV system it makes all of its own electricity so you wonder why does the chicken coop need electricity right? It's got just a tiny solar panel and that powers a little controller and a DC uh, light source in it. So we actually have an LED light in the chicken coop which controls their daylight so in the, in the winter time we actually get more eggs and it powers, this time of year, it powers a little fan so it keeps their, vent, their indoor air quality quite high. 
And so it's completely integrated into our lifestyle. So if the chickens are happy and all the fruit trees are happy, we're happy. Both Anne and I have come from a very conventional lifestyle uh, with university backgrounds, and we lived, in essence, a bigger, better, faster, more lifestyle. But we each had things in our lives that changed us, and we wanted to live simpler. We wanted to live in such a way where um, it was it, in line more with our values, where we could spend, we, ultimately we wanted to get to a goal of what we call a three-thirds lifestyle, where we spent one-third of our time working for an income, we could spend a third of our time volunteering, and we could spend a third of our time for our own passions, and our passions tend to be growing our food. So this is our earth sheltered greenhouse. It's cut into the bank, and so what we do is we have the sun that hits the, the thermal battery and stores it into the winter time, and so we can grow all year round in our, in our greenhouse, even when it's uh, minus 12 or minus 15 outside. We use 90% less electricity than the average BC residence, and that's for basically six people, and the average BC residence has two and a half people in it. Uh, we use 90% less water. On an overall energy footprint, um, I should know that number. <laughs> <laughs> but we do that through lifestyle choices, a lot of it. You know, a lot of it is some of the high-tech stuff we've done, but the majority of our living greener and having the smaller footprint is our lifestyle choices, and anybody can do that within their own home. It's how we live within our home that makes it green. The house is only so green, it's how you live within it that really makes it green. Smack Dab Video Productions providing complete video production services in Victoria, BC. I'm here with Daphne Allen and uh, I was hoping that you could maybe tell us a little bit about who Caleb Pike was and a bit about his history. Oh, certainly. Caleb Pike uh, was a young farmer who came from Dorset, England in 1850 uh, on the same ship that uh, Sebastian Helmican came and he started farming in the western communities from that point onward, and his last farmstead was at the Caleb Pike House here in 1883. Wow, that's uh, very interesting. This is my first time here, and, and uh, I'm absolutely, uh, you know, amazed by what you guys have out here. It's a great, great area. Um, what can people see and do here at Caleb Pike? It's a beautiful park site. People are welcome to come and have picnics on the lawn. We have events held here. We have. Uh, Easter egg hunts and Halloween parties. We have a, a fair in the, in the fall for people to come to. Um, it's used for council meetings here. Municipal meetings are held at the park site. It's the one place in the highlands that everybody can gather at. And it's also available for people to rent the site. Uh, for example, this weekend we're having a wedding here. We've had memorial services. People have birthday parties here. And it's a well-used park site. Yeah, well, that's that's exciting and uh, great to know that we can do all those types of uh, events and things here. So, uh, coming up after the community calendar is a story about something wildly fun uh, to do with the whole family. So, stick around. Welcome to Wild Play Element Park in West Shore, Victoria. Be ready to unleash your inner child and stretch your limits to brand new heights. This extraordinary park has something to offer for everyone who loves fun activities and the outdoors. The two and a half acres of forest that surrounds the park offers a breathtaking landscape, perfect for swinging through the trees and zipping down the zip line. 
West Shore Victoria Wild Play brings an extra challenge and extra fun to aerial adventures. West Shore community is pretty tight community. We have Lanford here, Caldwell, you know, we all the business support each other. So back in November 2009, when we first opened the park, we decided, you know, we we're part of the West Shore Mount Fuca Record Center here. And then we really decided, you know, get involved into the community because, you know, a healthy community is really important for our business. We have a course called Classic, Monkito Classic. It's 12 years above. Sometimes it's kind of hard to find an activity that everyone wants to do together, so that's where Monkito comes in and it's great because then they can stay together since they're all going to be on the same course. So at Wild Play White Shore Victoria, uh, our staff are super positive and super friendly. We love the job. You know, we never feel like this is a job that we have to drag ourselves in the morning and come here. You know, we see everything as a challenge. We see every opportunity we can help people as part of our passion and job. This is not just bringing the kids to go hiking or, you know, do something that's normal. You are above the ground, there's safeties, and we really design a system that, you know, make them feel like home. All right, you can step into the harness and pull it up. Not only does Wild Play offer a fun opportunity for the family, but they also recognize the importance of giving back to the community. Power to Be is um, it's an organization that they help special need kids to uh, do a variety of things. And we are one of their um, you know, charity of choice. So what we do is there's lots of kids, they come here, they have special needs, and we help them go on and course challenge themselves. Um, and we basically do that for free every year. I love Wild Play! The Highlands is home to about 2,000 residents. It's the smallest community here on the West Shore. We caught up with Mayor Jane Mendham and she tells us more about the community. Hi, I'm Jane Mendham, Mayor of Highland. Well, primarily Highlands identity, our regional identity, is that of green space, uh, conservation of, the, of, it, of environment. We are currently sitting at better than 36% parkland, and we are home to uh, several regional parks. We've got Mount Work, uh, part of Thetis Lake Park, uh, very popular Lone Tree Hill, easy climb, great view, and the fabulous Gowan Todd Park, which stretches from uh, Goldstream Park all the way through to Todd Inlet and much of it is uh, indeed located in Highlands. So this is a very popular place and you can measure the popularity of uh, people coming out to hike, to get away from some of the urban pressure and uh, just to really relax in, uh, in natural surroundings. And uh, another great resource to learn more about Highlands is our website, highlands.ca. Staff has done a fabulous job. It's uh, the best resource for finding out uh, a little more about what is uh, often called the hidden jewel, uh, but also the jewel in the crown of the region as far as uh, parkland and, and recreation go. 3,000 students go to Camosun College each year. A large portion of that student body commutes right here from the West Shore. Well, soon that's going to change for some very lucky West Shore students. We at Camosun really believe in providing and serving communities. And I think the West Shore is it's, uh, growing every day and people are moving there and young families and older families are there and we want to be there too. We really want to serve the West Shore community. And there's been discussions with the Souk School District to create the capacity so that we can do, a student in the West Shore can do a first year university on the West Shore, whether that's in the high school or nearby the high school, we don't, we're not quite sure. But the vision is, is to be able to offer a full slate of Camosun courses, not just arts and science, but uh, trades, business, technology, um, and health courses that uh, support the community needs. Well, West Shore is one of the most fastest growing areas in BC. Um, we're really lucky that there's going to be two new schools built there. There's an expanding population. Uh, and it's also, there's a lot of traffic uh, to and fro from the West Shore. So 
in order to serve this growing community even better, we want to make sure that students can learn close to home. Um, we've got a great course in Indigenous Studio Art, which is a course that transfers directly to UVic. Um, we've got the first year English, English 150. Uh, again, a really important course that everyone who's taking university courses at the college or university level takes. Um, same with psychology, the same with religions of the world. For, for students, the benefits are quite obvious. It's a long commute. Um, if you're traveling uh, by car or by transit, it, transit can be quite awkward. Especially when, if we, especially if you've seen the, you know, the traffic that we've had lately, so just saving time. Um, but also, there is uh, there are lots of people who would like to take courses that maybe don't have access and the time needed to travel that much. So, I think it's great for say a retired person or somebody who's working who'd like to take something in the evening as well as those students that might be in high school or fresh out of high school, the West Shore is going to demand the kind of good employees that Camosun has been doing for the last 40 years. So that's why, um, you know, from the college's perspective, the, the West Shore is a great opportunity for us to partner in delivering post-secondary education. I'd just like to say that we're really happy to be in the West Shore. Um, we've got five courses starting at the end of January. There's going to be an information session uh, probably in the third week of January. We welcome all students uh, who are interested in taking courses from the School of Arts and Science. Unfortunately, I wasn't there for this next assignment, but our crew was, and they had the chance to sample some of the best local food from some of the best chefs on the island. I'm Dwayne McIsaac, uh, president of the Island Chefs Collaborative. I own uh, Passion Eat Foods, and I'm cooking pizza today with uh, Byron Fry at Fry's Bakery. So we're uh, we're cooking pizzas. Byron's made the dough, and we're using uh, Fiorita Latte from Natural Pastures, beautiful morel mushrooms uh, from Eric Whitehead at Untamed Feast, and I made uh, gorgeous tomato sauce with roasted garlic, red chili oil and uh, fresh herbs from Michoza. Oh yeah, there we go. Put cheese on there. So that'll settle up and soak into the, soak into the dough a little bit. See how it's bubbling there? That's beautiful. Yeah, so the tomato sauce that like I was talking about and the uh, fiore de latte, uh, it's a cow mozzarella. And then we also did some, uh, some nice little grilled cheese here with the tomato and the morels. I uh, just served in a lovely big piece of fur. And then we have the grains that the flour was uh, made out of. This is the red fife wheat from a chosen. I'm owner of co-owner of the Cool Beast Saloon Maria in, in uh, Victoria, and we did a, uh, a sausage with local mutton and pork, and uh, we paired it with some sauerkraut that we made and a little mustard and a, on a gluten-free bun from Origin Bakery. Um, the idea is to be self-sufficient. This island was at one point. And we'd like to get it back to that point again. Great. My name is James McClellan. I'm the executive chef at Shawnee Lake School up in Shawnee Lake. Uh, what we're making here today is we've got a uh, local cabbage and sprout slaw. Uh, the cabbage is from Mitchell Farms. Eat more sprouts, uh, pea shoots, mixed bean sprouts, red wine vinaigrette. Uh, red wine vinegar, blended olive oil, garlic, some oregano, Worcester sauce, salt, pepper, all in the vinaigrette. Then we've got some yam chips as well. Yeah. Just <laughs> we got some yam chips uh, that'll go with that, and then we've also got a uh, be uh, some beautiful jerk chicken from Island Farmhouse Poultry, 
it's a cooperative of island chicken farmers from Vancouver Island and Gulf Islands. Uh, it's all European air chilled chicken, no water pump. Uh, it's processed uh, up in uh, Cow Bay. And uh, I'm just gonna grab a little bit over here. Just gonna grab this for one second. And so we got the full meal right there. Full meal right there for you. <laughs> All right, I'm John E. Brooks from uh, Smoke Bones Cook Shack in Victoria. Today we're serving some uh, new warba potatoes, pulled pork, and cheese curds. Sort of a deconstructed poutine, as it were, uh, and it's it's just delicious. Well, the the more food that we sell here on the island from the farmers. Uh, Creates more more infrastructure for the farming here in Victoria and on the on the uh, the island, and uh, events like this just educate the community where their food comes from and what you can actually get here on the island. A lot of people don't know that uh, we grow wheat here on the island. Uh, that there's organic pigs and cows and uh, chickens that lay beautiful blue eggs and all this great stuff. So uh, just beautiful food. You know, it's lots of great stuff going on here. Here in the West Shore, citizens take great pride in their community, but they also like to support others as well, which is probably why the West Shore hosts some of the most fantastic fundraising events. One that recently happened was the first annual Goddess Run, raising money for four women's charities. It was a beautiful day on the West Shore for the hugely successful inaugural Goddess Run, where some 1,500 ladies were running in this women's only event, which carved throughout the West Shore. Three, two, one. The party got started early and the atmosphere was fantastic with many competitors dressed in costumes for the race. Okay, what's the name of your team there? What's your Congrats to the organizers Louise Hodgson Jones and Kathy Noel on raining thousands of dollars for four local charities and for bringing smiles to a lot of the faces. There were three categories of runners and a variety of treats along the way for racers to enjoy. If you're interested in getting in on the Sisterly Love, next year's event will likely be even larger. So start thinking about costume ideas now. This September, the West Shore Chamber of Commerce is hosting the West Shore Community Awards, presented by the Weston Bear Mountain Golf Resort and Spa. This is the celebration of the community's brightest citizens, businesses, employees, and more. A call for nominations went out throughout the summer, and our community spoke by bringing us the brightest in all areas, such as Business of the Year, Employee of the Year, Citizen of the Year, and more. For a full list of finalists or to purchase tickets for our ceremony and dinner on September 28th, please visit our website. We look forward to seeing you there. For most of us, going to the playground is a normal part of growing up. For some, being able to experience a playground is life-changing. We met up with an inspirational West Shore resident who wants to give all kids a chance to play at the playground. I went to elementary school in Souk, actually. I was at Cicino's Elementary School, and I grew up with a disability. I got arthritis when I was three years old, and my arthritis was very flared up. 
It was very active and because of the fact that my healthcare team was very concerned about me getting injured, my arthritis getting flared up, they didn't want me going outside at recess, they didn't want me going outside at lunchtime, I couldn't play sports teams, they told me not to go into PE class. It was very isolating for me as a child because a lot of the kids didn't get a chance to really know me because I was not able to actually play and integrate. And so grade three came along and I had a fantastic teacher named Mr. Liam Palantano who actually lives in Colwood still. Um, and he's still a coach, I believe, at uh, West Shore Parks and Rec Swim Club for seniors. And he came along and he basically challenged me one day and said, I'd like you to set a goal. And I said very instinctively and rather impulsively, I want to go to the adventure playground. I want to climb the rope. And instead of saying, no, that's totally impossible, over a period of a number of months, he actually worked with me, coached me, supported me. And about, I guess it was three months later, two months later, it seemed like a long time, but it was really a short time. We worked together. And one day in front of my classmates and my other peers, cheering me on with his support i walked across the adventure playground tightrope hi i'm russ lazarick and i'm the president of the colwood rotary club uh, the colwood rotary club has been going for over 30 years now and uh, is an integral part part of our community uh, we've done a number of projects in in colwood uh, one is right behind me right now which is a uh, picnic shelter uh, when you come down to this area in the uh, in, in the Juan de Fuca Park area, you'll see another playground that ro that Rotary did did a number of years ago. Uh, but uh, three or four years ago, one of our members came came up with an idea to do an inclusive playground uh, that would al allow children with all with all ranges of abilities to come and and, and play together. The the park that we're working on is uh, something I'm quite excited about because it's something that we have the ability to not only have children play on a playground, but we're able to build an integrated playground so that uh, all children have the ability to uh, facilitate and play with each other, which is something that we're going to be really excited about. And it's something that we're really proud from a community standpoint because it's something that the Rotary Club has decided to do and it's something that's adding to all our community. So one of the fundraising activities that the Rotary Club has decided to do is that they're going to be, able to be building a wall and there's going to be bricks, uh, 99 bricks in total that we'll be able to, to have there, which we're going to be having all sorts of people be able to sponsor. People can make donations uh, either directly th through the Rotary Club and they can uh, find out how to do that with our, uh, from our website. Uh, they can make donations at West Shore Par Parks and Rec uh, here at the Juan de Fuca Centre or they can actually purchase the bricks at the various municipal halls being Colwood or Langford or Machosan or at, at, once again at, at the West Shore Parks and Rec as well. After that day, um, which was incredibly significant to me in my life, um, the kids began to not fear me. The kids began to understand me. They started asking questions about me and my disability. They started asking me to buddy with them in projects in class. They started asking me to play with them after class. They started to inviting me to things that were happening in the school. They actually began to understand me. They began to accept me and they began to include me. And suddenly I was part of the school community and much larger community and it changed my life. Thanks for joining us. And we'd like to hear about your stories. And if you like what you see, contact us if you want to be a volunteer. And make sure that you check out our website as well. And we'll be back soon sharing more stories about the West Shore. We will be filming in Machosan next time.